Today we have a, um, a panel of two speakers, Baruch Sadogulski, this is myself, I'm a developer advocate with JFrog, and here with me, Shai Yaakov, senior developer and artifactory team uh, that we will help me to deliver this webinar, especially in the demo and the Q&A parts. So let's talk a little bit about why should you use a private, a private registry for Docker. So there are a number of reasons. Most of them, of course, are pretty obvious, and you know them uh, for now. I will just summarize to be sure that we are on the same page. Um, the primary reason is the ability to store private images. It might include proprietary information like passwords, license keys, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. For example, you might uh, want to have a artifactory uh, image uh, for your artifactory code installation that will come with plain installed light. This is something you cannot host on a Docker, on public Docker registry, of course. Uh, another uh, reason is that you won't rely on network resources. Um, I'm not saying that uh, Docker registry is uh, unreliable, but you know, sometimes bad things happen and um, you cannot rely on uh, Docker registry to be uh, up 100% uh, of the time. Um, it also might, you also might be affected by uh, the internet connection, uh, which is also uh, not very desirable. So when you have your uh, register in-house, all those are uh, not a problem anymore. Uh, and of course, the network speed, um, you can download the images uh, much faster when you download them from your uh, local uh, network. And uh, especially when we are talking about Docker images, we are talking about relatively big files. So um, it's nice uh, to have them uh, be downloaded from a server in-house. Um, there are a number of options, actually two uh, major options for uh, installing Docker registry in-house. And the simplest one is the Docker registry, the official Docker registry. You just uh, get it as a Docker uh, image, of course, and then you can run it on, on your machine, on your server. Um, it's very, very easy to, uh, to, to obtain, very easy to run, very easy to manage. Um, but there is a more, uh, let's say, sophisticated and more advanced option, and uh, this is Artifactory. Uh, I'm going to get to the advantages of Artifactory on top of a uh, plain uh, Docker registry in, uh, in a couple of minutes. Uh, you can also have, you have a number of options to have your Docker registry as a service. Uh, so here, uh, the advantages of having it as a service is that you don't, don't need a dedicated server for it. You don't need to maintain it. It's always up to date, um, et cetera, et cetera. And here you have much more options. So Docker Hub from Docker Inc. is a, uh, one of the options. It's the natural option, of course, when you use Docker. There are a number of other services. I listed here uh, just a few, but I think there are a, um, uh, a dozen of them as, as of today. Quire, IoT, CoreOS, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and of course, there is Artifactory with Artifactory as a service offering as well. You can have uh, your own uh, instance on our cloud with a uh, full Docker support. Uh, again, we believe that um, uh, this is uh, the uh, superior choice, and um, let me tell you why. So uh, when you have options and you do, why would you choose Artifactory? Um, first of all, um, uh, I believe that um, I can say that Artifactory is the more mature and advanced product of, uh, of all of them because uh, Artifactory has been uh, on the market for eight years now, um, although we started as a, as a Maven repository, but we advanced to be a binary repository, general binary repository very fast, uh, and uh, adding yet another type of binaries to our stack Docker this is all, all what we did, and the rest of the um, the rest of the features are there for years. Um, one of the most important ones is uh, the support for very advanced uh, authentication and authorization capabilities that you have in Artifactory. 
Um, the permission target um, uh, model that we use is very powerful. It allows you to configure uh, any kind of permission for any kind of user and group uh, on any level of repository or a path within a repository. Uh, another very big advantage is integration with your um, organizational infrastructure, such as LDAP, such as um, Crowd, uh, SAML, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, for, especially for enterprise uh, setups, you definitely do not want to manage yet another set of users inside uh, your Docker uh, registry. Another very powerful uh, feature that we are going to talk about it during the demo uh, is the ability to annotate the artifact, and that, of course, including Docker, um, Docker images with custom properties. You can annotate uh, the files uh, by using REST API directly from your build server during the automated processes or even uh, from the UI um, if you uh, need to add a property uh, just by uh, browsing to the artifact uh, from, uh, from the artifactory UI. Um, once you have those properties in place, you can use them for very sophisticated REST API queries um, and uh, those properties uh, can um, affect uh, the resolution process and uh, you can decide um, which artifacts you want or don't want to resolve based on those properties. Again, uh, we will show you uh, a little bit of that in the demo as well. Uh, I already mentioned uh, and uh, the REST API. This is a very, very powerful feature of Artifactory. Um, with very rich and powerful REST API uh, that allows you to manipulate your artifact from um, your automatic tools. It can be something as simple as a curl or a, um, a wget, and of course, you can easily incorporate uh, calls to REST API into your build infrastructure, into your delivery infrastructure, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and um, of course, all the standard tools um, for working with uh, any kind of artifact inside the artifactory, uh, also use this REST API. It's true for your Docker client, it's true for a YAM or Debian client, and even for build tools uh, like Gradle and Maven and uh, Nougat, etc., etc. All those tools use the same REST API uh, that you can use uh, for um, getting additional functionality. Um, another very powerful feature that allows you full control of what's going on in your repository are the user plugins. Um, you can script uh, using very simple groovy uh, code snippets any um, functionality that you want, and it will be triggered uh, either as a, a reaction to some event which happened inside Artifactory, for example, new artifact being added or, or downloaded, or uh, they can be triggered uh, by a scheduler. You can, uh, for example, code your own cleanup procedures and run them uh, once in a while. Um, or they can be triggered in, on demand by using, again, a REST API that will trigger um, this plugin or, or not. So using those plugins, you can um, customize virtually everything inside your repository uh, with the way that you uh, use your uh, Docker images. Uh, another very important feature that Artifactory provides you um, out of the box, and uh, this is again very, very important, especially for enterprise setups, are uh, the high availability. Uh, you can establish um, a highly available Artifactory setup with uh, a two or more servers running in cluster and um, this will provide you with a zero downtime for your Docker registry. And um, when we are talking about busy environments, uh, that uh, a lot of uh, things are, are, are going on, and uh, you have to maintain your binary repository up, a uh, high, highly available uh, service is uh, mandatory uh, for uh, those kinds of setups. Uh, another feature that uh, is also very, very um, mature and powerful is the integration with the CI servers. 
So we developed a bunch of plugins for all the major CI servers like uh, Jenkins and Hudson and TeamCity and Bamboo that allow you to um, get the dependencies that your build needs from uh, the CI server and deploy the artifacts that this build provides back to the CI, uh, to the artifact from, from CI server. And this is also true for Docker. If your um, images are being created uh, in your CI server, you can declare the dependencies that you need. Uh, our plugin will bring those dependencies to the correct place inside the workspace of your CI server, and then uh, you will be able to use them and deploy the images that you create back to Artifactory uh, for your clients to, uh, to get them and, and work with them. Um, infrastructural benefit that you might get from using the Artifactory is the checksum-based storage. Uh, it's very, very important, especially when we are talking about big files and Docker images are uh, relatively big. Um, checksum storage allows uh, deduplicated storage, uh, which means that if you have two uh, files, uh, which are actually the same but have uh, different names, uh, they actually will uh, be stored only once. And the, the metadata will uh, know how to display uh, the same file for you in two different locations under two different names. Um, another very big gain from checksum-based storage is a free copy and free move. Uh, when you build promotion pipelines, and you want uh, your uh, files to be promoted from one repository to another, um, preventing operation, operating on the file system level is also a big advantage, again, especially for uh, big files. And uh, saying that, um, I would say that the most important benefit of using Artifactory for uh, for Docker images is that you have one binary repository that serves all the, your binary needs inside your organization. Your development tools, uh, teams can use um, Artifactory for their development needs, uh, whether they write in Java, in .NET, um, in Ruby, in Python, um, or uh, in uh, Node.js. Uh, your operation teams can benefit from the support of um, RPM for YAM images, uh, well, RPM images and uh, Debian. And of course, now with Docker, you can actually serve all those binaries and manage all those binaries in one very advanced, uh, very, very advanced tool. Uh, and I think now it will be the best time to uh, <coughs> show you some, uh, to show you some uh, good stuff that we developed for you. Okay, Shai, I think uh, we can see your screen now. Okay. So, uh, hello everyone. Uh, what you are going to see today is basically a step-by-step -step, uh, full demo of using Artifactory with Docker together. Uh, we're going to see the basic stuff at first, and at the very end we are going to see some uh, nice cool tricks we can use with Docker and some scripting around it uh, utilizing Artifactory REST API. Uh, so, uh, before I really start with the demo itself, right here, right here what you see uh, is our wiki page for uh, using Artifactory with uh, Docker repositories. Uh, you can find it uh, uh, basically at our uh, webpage and search for the Docker repositories wiki page. Uh, this right here is going to be uh, basically your best friend, at least at the beginning, because we are trying to, to list uh, and, and fully detail each and every step regarding configuration and uh, basic and advanced stuff regarding Docker and Artifactory together. So uh, I'm going to use the wiki as a reference and we'll try uh, and start and explain how I'm using Artifactory with Docker. So as the first step, as the wiki states, I will go to Artifactory uh, and I will join, I'm going to uh, create a local repository for hosting all my Docker uh, images. So this is uh, my uh, Artifactory UI under the admin tab. I'm going to repositories, clicking on new, giving it a name Docker local, and under packages, 
I'm going to uh, check the enable Docker support. That's all you need to do for uh, uh, for Docker regarding artifactory side. Now the next step is going to be uh, configuring a reverse proxy. Uh, I'm going to show two examples. One of them is going to be Nginx, and the second one is going to be Apache. Uh, and before we do that, uh, we need to explain a bit why we actually need a reverse proxy when using Docker. So basically, we have uh, uh, basic two two uh, limitations from the Docker client by design. So one of them is the Docker uh, client cannot use any context path when deploying or pushing uh, Docker images into Artifactory. So for example, if you will try to do Docker push uh, localhost uh, 8080 slash Artifactory, that's not going to work. And we need some kind of a reverse proxy listening on port 80, which is going to take all the requests and move them around, uh, uh, basically forward them into Artifactory. Uh, this is one of the reasons. The second one is basically we want to use HTTPS because by design, uh, the Docker client does not allow you to send uh, basic authentication when uh, when talking to uh, a private registry. And as Baruch already mentioned at the beginning, uh, we would like to utilize all of Artifactory uh, vast uh, security mechanism and to use specific users and apply different permissions for each and every user and group. So uh, Shai, you're saying that uh, we cannot use the Docker integration without HTTPS? So the answer is yes and no, because uh, now we can use it, and we can uh, configure Artifactory to, to uh, let anonymous users to deploy packages, but we, we don't really want to do that, because we want to, to have full control about who, uh, who can access what and who can deploy which package and, to, uh, and into which repository. Okay, so obviously using HTTPS is the right way to go. Yes. Okay, so uh, as a first step, what we are going to see here is how I'm going to configure Nginx uh, uh, to talk with Artifactory. Okay, so this is my basic uh, Nginx configuration. I'm having two different servers, one of them it's going to listen on port 443, which is the default one for HTTPS. The second one is going to listen on port 80, which is the default for uh, HTTP. Uh, the first one is only used by a ping command Docker send. So we are going to, to be focused on the HTTPS configuration right here at the bottom. So the first step, I'm going to uh, give my local machine a concrete uh, host name. I'm going to call it docker.jfogdev.com. So this is going to be my server name inside Nginx. I'm going to configure where my SSL certificates uh, are listed on. Uh, one important note about it is that I'm using a self-signed SSL certificate. And most likely, if you don't have already uh, a star SSL certificate, you are going to do the same thing when you start testing uh, the integration about Artifactory in Docker. So uh, we're going to see in a little bit why uh, uh, why we're going to have a little problems with that and how we can avoid them and, and, and fix them. Um, moving on, client max body size zero. We want to use uh, unlimited client body size. You can you can limit it whatever you like, but usually Docker images are quite big and and most of them are a few gigabytes of of data. So. Uh, here I'm using zero, but you can put it on uh, eight gigs, it will be enough. The second one is going to be zero means unlimited. Yeah, zero is unlimited. The second uh, configuration is going to be uh, trunk uh, transfer encoding on. Uh, I'm using Nginx uh, uh, on the latest version. Uh, when, you, when you want to use Nginx, you need to make sure uh, with Docker, you need to make sure you're using at least version 1.4.3. The reason for that is that only from this version, Nginx supports uh, chunk uh, transfer encoding, and this is a must when using Docker uh, in front on, on this, in front with Nginx and uh, Artifactory. We are doing some rewriting of URLs for Artifactory and all for, uh, and for the Docker uh, request, which, which uh, almost all of them start with the slash v1. And as the last step, we're going to take the location slash artifactory. We're going to configure proxy path 
through my local artifactory server, which is on port 8081. Uh, we are going to pass all of the regular headers for uh, HTTP and HTTPS, and the most important header we need to, to, to pass to artifactory is the host header. Uh, the reason for that is that uh, Docker is going, is going to use uh, um, the host header in order to, to know which registry it needs to push all the Docker images. So what I'm doing here is I'm telling Nginx, pass the host, uh, uh, host HTTP header to Artifactory. Artifactory is going to pass this host uh, header back to Docker, and Docker knows to communicate back with Nginx and Artifactory in the way. Okay. So uh, I'm going to quit uh, that. Now the second step, as I mentioned, I want to use a concrete username when I'm pushing uh, Docker images. So I don't want to use just the anonymous. Uh, what I need to do is basically uh, take the um, uh, credentials from Artifactory. So I'm just using curl with admin and password, and then communicating through the Nginx with Artifactory under v1 uh, slash out. And this is going to give me the Docker credentials I need, and I'm going to put them right into my um, user home dot uh, Docker CSG file. So let's see what happened there. So as you can see, Artifactory gave me this uh, little JSON response. Basically, it says for this specific URL, which is going to be my Nginx URL, it's under HTTPS Docker JFogDev.com. The authentication is admin password uh, base 64 encoded. Uh, and this is my email uh, I put in inside Artifactory. Okay, so uh, let's take one of the official uh, Docker images. Uh, I'm going to use uh, specifically Ubuntu, uh, and we're going to see how we can deploy it, uh, actually push it to Artifactory. So in the first step, what you need to do is uh, Docker pull uh, the Ubuntu image from the official Docker Hub uh, repository. So as you can see, at the same time, I already have it here locally. I'm going to see the Docker images. Here is my Ubuntu with uh, the latest uh, with, with the latest tag. And now, in order to push the Ubuntu image into Artifactory, I will need to tag it with the Nginx uh, hostname. So in order to do that, as you can simply do uh, docker tag ubuntu jforgdev.com slash ubuntu. Now the reason for that is that uh, Docker uh, natively knows how to differentiate between uh, images by their fully qualified name. So when Docker sees Ubuntu, it already knows it's going from the public uh, Docker hub. But when it, when it sees Ubuntu with a prefix of uh, some kind of a URL, some kind of a, a hostname, it knows that this is a, a different Ubuntu image uh, coming from this specific uh, URL. Okay, so uh, the last step is going to see how I can push it. So I'm going to do Docker push, just for the .com slash Ubuntu. And uh, right here is the first probably the first uh, issue you're going to see when you're using self-signed uh, certificates. So uh, first of all, I will need to say that I'm using the latest uh, Docker version, which is 1.3.1. And as you can see inside the message, the Docker client, or actually the Docker daemon, doesn't allow uh, pushing uh, Docker images to, uh, to what is called uh, an un, uh, un, uh, unknown uh, registry. So basically, when I'm using a self-signed certificate, Docker is not going to allow me to push that image. What I need to do is to, uh, I'm going to change my, uh, my Docker uh, daemon config file. Uh, by default, under Ubuntu, it's under uh, slash etc, slash default, slash Docker. And as you can see, under the Docker options, I will need to, to say that uh, I'm, I'm allowing the Docker image to communicate with a, with a insecure uh, self signed certificate uh, local Nginx host. Okay, so I'm going to add minus minus insecure uh, registry with my host, which is docker.jfogdev.com. Uh, I'm going to add it to Docker options, save this file. I'm going to restart my Docker daemon service. And if I'm going to try and push now, 
everything uh, should be okay and everything should succeed. This is very interesting because um, I remember just a few, uh, was a week ago, uh, we still didn't have this um, insecure flag and uh, during the development, and we use um, Docker uh, here heavily inside uh, JFrog mainly for setting up uh, bin tray because it's a rather complicated environment. So we use Docker to configure uh, developer machines and the CI server, etc. I remember that uh, we actually um, had to install the certificate on each and every developer machine in order to be able to work. Yeah, that's correct. So as I was saying, uh, I'm using Docker 1.3.1. Uh, I highly uh, recommend you to also use that because they introduced the insecure flag, which is uh, going to make your life a bit easier. But in case you're using uh, any older version of Docker, you're going to, to need and take the SSL certificate and install it manually on the operation system of each and every Docker client. Yeah, yeah. so it actually was one of our feedback to, to Docker, and, and I'm glad that uh, this, this change happened. Um, another question of that, um, will this insecure registry flag, um, maybe it will allow me to use, uh, to use Docker without HTTPS? Uh, so basically the answer is yes, you can use Docker without HTTPS, but uh, as we already mentioned, uh, you can use uh, HTTP, but only with anonymous uh, enabled. So it, wa it won't help me. I will still need the certificate, and the difference is that with this flag, I can use self-signed certificate. Exactly. So, so the, the ultimate solution will be use an insecure uh, registry with, an, with HTTPS, and uh, that way you can use any kind of user you like. Uh, this, is, uh, this is perfect for internal usage, for development process, for staging environment, and uh, this kind of stuff. Yes, exactly. Okay. Another th interesting thing that I noticed is that you actually use the name of the image after the slash when you tag your uh, your image. So you t the tag looks like docker jfrogdev dot com slash ubuntu. Right. So so this is just was my choice of naming, but I can just easily uh, tag the ubuntu image and call it. Uh, something else, so let's try to do that. I, I'm going to call the Ubuntu image. Instead of Ubuntu, I'm going to call it Shai. And uh, I'm going to push that into uh, Artifactory. And it works the same. It has the, the exact same layer, uh, but only a different tag. Okay, so we're going to see a bit later how it looks like inside Artifactory UI. Interesting. Um, what it means is that um, this tag name uh, seeds on the main space that we usually use uh, for a difference between different repositories in Artifactory. So if I would set up Artifactory now without Docker, probably my host uh, will be followed by a name of the repository. You know, as we usually do, we can say jfrogdemo.org slash leave the release local. This release local will be a name of the repository and the path will come afterwards. Uh, I cannot do it with Docker anymore. Uh, again, the answer is uh, yes and no, because yes, I'm currently I'm, I'm trying to show how to use only one uh, local repository, which is Docker local. But if you would like to use different and multiple repositories inside Artifactory, it's perfectly fine. What you will need to do is either set a vhost inside your Nginx configuration or uh, bind it to a different port. So you can say, port uh, 443 is going to be pushing for Docker local, and port uh, 444 is going to be pushing for Docker local too, for example. Sounds like a feasible solution, although it complicates uh, the setup a little bit. Yeah, so we're going just to start with a Docker local, uh, and we can continue without it. Okay, great. So uh, we push the also shy in the Ubuntu image. Let's see exactly how it looks in Artifactory. So again, I'm going to the UI. Under the artifacts tab, you can see Docker local. And I have dot images and repositories. And you can see here, this is uh, the shy uh, Docker image, and this is the Ubuntu one. I can see it has the latest tag, and shy also has the latest tag. Uh, and, and that looks okay. Now, before we, we dig in uh, further inside Artifactory UI, first of all, let's see 
let's see the logs inside our refactory. So as you can see, as you can see right over here, Artifactory is deploying all the image, uh, all the image layers basically. I'm going to show you the request log, and you can see exactly everything that goes from the Docker client through Nginx and right back to Artifactory. Basically, Artifactory implements the full Docker registry API, so it works seamlessly with the Docker uh, client. Okay, that's great. So uh, the next step is going to see how we are doing the same uh, thing, but without Nginx. Perhaps you want to use uh, Apache. So I'm going to show uh, how I'm configuring Apache as a reverse proxy uh, for Artifactory in Docker. So the first step is going to be stopping the Nginx uh, service. And I'm going uh, to show you my Apache configuration. So Apache looks a bit uh, easier, okay? Uh, the same thing applies about the certificate and the server name. My server name is going to be docker.jfog.dev.com. My port is the default HTTPS one, the 414. Here are my uh, SSL certificates. Again, I'm using uh, a self-signed certificate, which means I'm going to need the insecure flag uh, for the Docker daemon. These are my logs, and simply I'm going to do a proxy pass. So as I mentioned with Nginx, when we uh, move forward the host uh, HTTP header, the same thing applies with Apache. Using the proxy preserve host uh, on uh, flag, it means that Apache is going to take the host uh, HTTP header, move it uh, forward to Artifactory, and Artifactory can send it back to Docker to communicate back with any other uh, physical request. Uh, I'm doing a proxy pass, as we already mentioned, the proxy pass is going specifically to a Docker local repository. So as you can see, the proxy pass tells um, Apache uh, to, to reverse all the, all the requests to localhost 8081 slash artifactory, my local artifactory instance. API Docker is the, uh, uh, is the endpoint of uh, our Docker communication inside artifactory. And Docker local is my repository name inside Artifactory. Uh, one thing to notice is under the location, I'm going to allow everything, which means uh, if, if you will take lo a look at the private Docker registry documentation, uh, one thing that they are doing is giving you a private registry, but letting you uh, manage and host all your permissions and users and, and, and groups. Uh, what we are doing here, we are taking it off from our uh, Apache or Nginx, and we are letting Artifactory manage all these permission uh, permission targets and permission and security rings. Uh, this basically means that we can utilize uh, all of Artifactory features regarding security. One of them, for example, can be integrating with your internal uh, LDAP system. So perhaps you want to integrate your LDAP, and each and every user in LDAP you will want it to, to, to authenticate with Artifactory and Docker. You can perfectly do that. Another one can be uh, maybe using a Flatian Cloud. Uh, just uh, choose one of your, of your liking and, and the one that we support. Okay, so let's see this configuration. I'm going to start the Apache <coughs> uh, server. And uh, again, like I did before with the Docker uh, pull, tag, and push. I'm going to do the same thing with a different image. So I'm going to do Docker pull sent OS. I'm going to pull the latest one uh, from the Docker uh, hub registry. I'm going to tag it again with my uh, with my own uh, artifactory and Apache uh, URL. And as the last step, I'm going to push it into Artifactory through, uh, uh, through Apache. So I'm going to do docker push, docker jfogdev.com slash centos. The same thing applies, which is basically transparent to the client. Uh, the, the docker client goes to Apache. Apache is reverse hosting the request to Artifactory. And all the images and all of its layers are getting deployed and pushed uh, into my docker local repository inside Artifactory. Okay. 
So I'm going to let it finish, uh, and afterwards we're going to see exactly uh, inside the UI how things are looking. Okay. Uh, so again, I'm going to show you the request log. You can see all the API Docker uh, requests are going from Apache to Artifactory. Basically, what you are seeing here is all the layers uh, which belong to the CentOS uh, image. And now let's see how it looks like inside Artifactory uh, UI. So basically, when you are configuring a local Docker repository, you will see uh, two different folders. One of them is the dot images, which basically basically is a kind of a checksum storage of a flat image of all of my layers, all of the layers including CentOS, all of the layers including uh, Ubuntu and any other future image I would like to deploy. And the repository is basically the metadata which holds all my repositories. So as you can see, I have the Ubuntu one, the Shy one from before, and the CentOS. Now, this right here is basically uh, showing you that Artifactory is not only a private registry uh, for Docker. It's also uh, kind of half registry, half uh, Docker Hub, uh, in a sense that it is a registry which it knows how to serve and, and, and host Docker images, and it's using, and it's using uh, the hub capabilities uh, in the sense of uh, giving you uh, different metadata for all of your images, giving you permissions and security rings, uh, and so on and so forth. So uh, let's see uh, how how things are looking uh, at under the Ubuntu image. So first of all, I'm going to expand the Ubuntu folder, and you are going to see I have uh, the index images uh, JSON file, which is basically uh, a JSON file telling what what are those images uh, or actually layers. Uh, which belongs to the Ubuntu uh, image. You can see that Artifactory already tags this specific file with the docker.repo name, which is library slash uh, Ubuntu, which means that you can use any of uh, Artifactory REST API to search for this specific image using property search. Uh, you can do some bunch of scripting or using uh, user plugins and we're going to, uh, to show you uh, in a little bit. Uh, in order to find those uh, images and layers. Okay. The next uh, thing we are going to see uh, is, uh, is the tag itself. So as you can see, I pushed the Ubuntu latest tag inside Artifactory. I have a tag JSON, which is basically a file describing all the metadata of the latest tag belongs to Ubuntu image. Also, on the tag itself, I can see two different properties. The one is the Docker tag name, which is the latest, and the other one is the content, which is the actual layer the tag is, uh, is pointing to. Okay, so you can use this information in order to search for a specific tag, and from that tag, uh, going directly to the layer uh, that the tag uh, points to. Okay, so uh, this is basically the information we can see uh, under the uh, repository metadata. Let's see how, uh, how all of the flat images and layers, how, uh, how they look like. So I'm going to expand the 5.5 five, uh, the five, five, uh, image, the Docker image. You can see bottom files. One, first of all, if I will click on the folder under the property tab, you can see I have the Docker image ID. Again, this is the full uh, image or uh, layer ID of this specific tag. I can use property search. I can use any other uh, search capabilities that the factory uh, has to offer in order to find this specific layer. And I already have uh, the size of this uh, tag. In this particular case, uh, this tag is only metadata without any files. So the size is only zero. You can also see an ancestry JSON file, which is basically telling you the full uh, the full ancestry uh, of this specific uh, Docker layer. So uh, if I will go to the Docker ancestry uh, tab, what you can see here is basically the same thing as doing uh, Docker images minus minus three uh, inside your command line. So if you are clicking on five five uh, layer, you can see the entire uh, parenthood of this specific layer. You can click on one of them, go directly to them, uh, and basically have the entire information uh, of which consists the Ubuntu image. 
<coughs> okay, the next one is going to be the, the JSON file of this uh, layer. The JSON file again is just the metadata for this layer. If I will click on the Docker info, you can see that Artifactor knows how to expand this uh, information and give you uh, all the, the relevant info in a nice uh, table like UI. Again, you can see the direct parent of this specific layer. You can see the the full uh, full uh, layer ID right over here. You can click on them to go uh, between the parent and the child uh, inside the tree. And uh, the last file I'm going to show is the layer tar, which is basically uh, a tar file consisting of all of these specific layer files. So again, because of this layer, it's, it's, it's just metadata. So the layer tar file uh, doesn't have any uh, extra files in it. Okay, so uh, we just saw how, how things are looking like inside Artifactory. So let's see how I can search for stuff from within the Docker client. So let's say that I already deployed the Ubuntu image. I would like to, my user to be able to search for it. I can do that by simply typing Docker search, docker.jfogdev.com slash Ubuntu, which is basically same uh, for Docker, Search for the Ubuntu text under docker uh, jfogdev.com uh, URL. I'm going to click into them. One second. Okay. Uh, let me just add one more property uh, manually to the index images of uh, Ubuntu. So I'm going to add Docker uh, description. I'm going to give it my super Ubuntu image. Okay. And as you can see, when I'm searching for Ubuntu, I can see the library Ubuntu uh, specific uh, image. I can see its description. Uh, you can already imagine inside the description, you can put whatever you like. So for example, you can put your project name inside the description. And when users want to search for images according to different project names, they can simply do Docker search uh, project name. Second. Project name and it's going to find the same Ubuntu image uh, which I've already deployed in the Artifactory. Okay, uh, so this is uh, basic enough. Uh, I'm going to pass in now to Baruch and we are going to continue a bit with more advanced stuff about Docker and Artifactory integration. Yeah, so of course there is plenty of stuff that, that we wanted to share, to share with you, but I see that we now have already under 15 minutes, and I really would like to save at least 10 minutes for, for Q&A. So um, let's, for a couple of minutes, just discuss what, what else you can do. And uh, we actually have some of the code that we are going to talk about in our uh, GitHub repository. Uh, so um, you will be able to see uh, some of the ideas that we will discuss uh, already already implemented. So here we have uh, here you see in two example show scripts that uh, work uh, with uh, artifactory Docker integration and make uh, your life uh, even easier. So one of them, the uh, pull push repo uh, script, um, is is a relatively simple script that that ga that gathers the three commands that Shai showed you pull from the original, from the pull official uh, images from the official uh, Docker Hub, tag them with your uh, own tags, and then pull them to Artifactory, all of it uh, in, in one command. Um, of course, uh, this is not something uh, very fancy, and uh, you can understand how easy to do it. Um, so just Take a look at it, and 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 it's pretty and it's pretty straightforward. The other one, uh, Shai, you want to talk about a little bit about it? Yes. Yeah, so the other one is called uh, localized report, which is basically taking uh, one of your uh, existing Docker images. Let's say you want to take the center image, 
and we want to what we call localize. Localize means that it's, it's not it's not enough that you have your own private registry which is hosting all your Docker images. You also want your Docker container uh, to fetch any uh, software packages from internal locations. For example, if you are using Node.js uh, and you are building some kind of a web application, you will want to use uh, the, you will want actually the Docker container to pull each and every npm package directly from Artifactory locally. You don't want the container to go to the outside world. So this is very interesting in use case as you, as you can visualize Artifactory as a binary repository for more than just Docker images. So not only your Docker image is going to be downloaded from Artifactory, but it also already includes software dependency managers inside this image that already are pre-configured to use Artifactory as the sources for the dependencies. Exactly. So, so basically the localized repo, what it's doing is detecting the specific operation system of uh, the Docker container, whether it's sent away, Ubuntu, Fedora, and so on and so forth. And it's reconfiguring all the packages managers to go to Artifactory instead of going to the outside world. So Artifactory knows how to handle Debian packages. It knows how to handle YAM packages and NPM packages. You can simply create your own uh, local and remote repository hosting all those packages inside Artifactory and use the localized uh, repo uh, bash script in order to, to have an already existing container going to Artifactory to fetch those packages. Interesting. Um, now let's talk about those are the scripts that actually use REST API. Uh, let's talk a little bit what, on, on what you can do by using uh, user plugins. This is, uh, this is another um, very powerful way to extend, uh, to extend uh, your, uh, uh, what, what you can do, uh, your, your options with, uh, with Docker. So um, for example, uh, one of the examples might be promotion of the full stack of a uh, Docker images with all the layers. Uh, usually the promotion is just taking uh, all the files under a certain uh, directory and moving them all together um, to another repository. Uh, it won't work with Docker because the um, layers are in different uh, directories. They don't have any common uh, folder that you can move and get all your layers moved together. Uh, uh, they know about each other by this uh, JSON file that lists all the layers. So um, what, uh, what you can do, and again, you'll be able to see it in our uh, GitHub, is a plugin that analyzes those dependencies, determines which layers, which images need to be promoted and promote them together from a one a repository to another, right? This is, can, this is a very nice use case um, of the user plugins. Another one that I, I can, I can think of is uh, um, kind of a garbage collection. Uh, when you have an image which is not a layer in any of the stacks, uh, you probably don't need it anymore. And uh, we can uh, write a user plugin that will analyze those dependencies between layers find images which are not part of this hierarchy and uh, successfully delete them. And this can be um, a scheduled job that runs one in a while and uh, does this kind of uh, cleanup, uh, uh, cleanup uh, maintenance. Okay, so um, we are almost out of time and uh, I would uh, like to see uh, some, uh, um, some of your questions and uh, see what we can answer. So um, here uh, it will be uh, me and Shai, and we will take those questions uh, one by one. So uh, most of them, I hope, they will be already answered during our demo. So I will uh, just um, repeat uh, and, and see what we can answer. So first question is, um, will you will be able to get a copy of the slides? Of course, we will send a follow-up email with all the resources, the recording, the slides, and uh, of course, the way for you to get the t-shirts. Um, this is one question. I think Shai uh, will take the next one. Yeah, so the question is, is it possible to configure the HTTPS without proxy? I think we are in the repository. Yeah, so, so I already showed that in, with uh, using the Apache, but the Nginx is the same stuff. 
instead of doing a rewrite for entire repository, simply do a rewrite for slash v1, which is all of Docker uh, requests. Um, another question is, um, what kind of license is required to uh, use the Docker integration? Uh, so Artifactory Professional License, Artifactory Pro, um, also already includes this add-on, and uh, if you have Artifactory Pro instance, um, all you need to do is upgrade to the latest version, uh, you know, by replacing the jar uh, as you usually do, and then uh, you will be able to start using the Docker integration. Uh, here is another one for Shite. Okay, so the question is, can you configure the properties by default? on the physical Docker image prior to pushing it to our factory. So uh, basically what, what you're trying to achieve is, uh, I'm assuming, uh, configuring the properties of the Docker description uh, and all the other properties on, inside of the images. So the basic uh, default properties that the factory does for you. But if you would like to add anything else, uh, as we mentioned, you can utilize one of our user plugins. Uh, basically our user plugins have a, a vast uh, uh, entry points for Artifactory, so uh, you can decide what to do when when a file is getting deployed in Artifactory. So you can say if a file is deployed and it is a Docker image, I would like to set it with a specific property. So the answer is yes, you can do that using uh, a user plugin. Okay, and uh, here is another uh, very interesting one. Okay, so the question is, is there any way to have Artifactory SSO and anonymous SS enabled at the same time? So uh, the answer for that is yes, you can uh, have anonymous enabled and uh, Artifactory SSO. Uh, it basically means that if users are going to uh, authenticate with anonymous or basically without any credentials, they are going to go, uh, uh, they are going to be logged in as anonymous by default. And if the user is going to provide its, its own credentials, which uh, resist inside the SSO, Artifactory is going to log in it as uh, an actual user. Again, our, our uh, recommendation is to use actual users to push Docker images and to pull them because you will want to provision afterwards all the logs of Artifactory to see who did what uh, and what time and, and so on and so forth. Okay, so um, I see a lot of, I see a lot of questions um, regarding the, um, a lot of questions regarding uh, the configuration, uh, the, uh, the virtual host configuration, the SSL stuff, and um, and that's understandable because um, it's kind of a very um, complicated topic to explain, especially when we try to address both Nginx and Apache uh, during a 2025 demo. So um, I think that we put a, quite an effort. Uh, in our documentation, especially in this angle, to uh, make sure that um, uh, you you can uh, successfully configure your Apache and Nginx servers uh, to use the Docker integration, and all this documentation is uh, available when you go to uh, our website. Uh, from it, you can find it very easily uh, under uh, the product, the Artifactory Pro features, and in the list of the Pro features, just click on uh, the Docker link. Uh, just expand uh, the Docker. You will see here uh, the list for the wiki documentation, a little bit of uh, white papers, uh, the screencast, of course, um, the, this webinar recording uh, also will be linked there. But here, as you can see, um, it's all documented, uh, including the configuration of reverse proxy both under Nginx and Apache. Hopefully it will uh, help you to find uh, your way around. And uh, although it's kind of a complicated stuff, it's reasonably uh, standard for uh, those uh, servers and a lot of information is available uh, in the official documentation so you will be able to find it as, um, as well. Here is another one. I, um, I'll try to explain uh, once again uh, the three modes of operation. So we have, um, uh, you, can you can configure uh, your repository uh, without HTTPS and using HTTP um, without uh, SSL. Uh, in this case, you will be only um, limited to work with anonymous access. That can be nice for uh, you know, some environments, 
when uh, you can just go and push your, your images and pull your images without providing credentials, but it defeats a lot of our factory if, uh, authentication and authorization features. So you won't be able to control who can deploy and who can resolve your images. You won't be able to see uh, who did what, et cetera, et cetera. So we generally don't recommend it. Other option is installing a self-signed certificate on the server. In this case, you will be able to use HTTPS and gain all the benefits from authorization and authentication of our factory, but uh, you have to use this insecure flag. Otherwise, you will have to install your unsigned, your self-signed certificate uh, on each and every machine. And uh, this is a, the best option for a working in-house, for working on development environments, on uh, integration environments, etc. Uh, the third, the third option is using um, a CA signed certificate. In this way, uh, you uh, won't have any limitation, and you will be able to use it for uh, uh, with any client without the insecure uh, flag. But that, of course, uh, requires you to obtain a license for the host that actually matches one of your repositories and other factory, this repository under which the Docker uh, support is configured. Exactly. One, one more thing about uh, the authentication. Uh, so the question is regarding the Docker login command. Uh, so uh, if one of you is already familiar with it, Docker is using a Docker, a Docker login in order to search the credentials from the server and save them uh, locally. Uh, the thing about the factory is that by default, Usually, uh, users, uh, the first thing they are, using, they are doing with artifacts on the server is disabling the anonymous access because they don't want any anonymous user, non authenticated, to be, to be able to access the artifactory. And this is the reason why we didn't implement the Docker login uh, command because we cannot do that if we, already, if we don't already have the credentials of the user. So instead of using the Docker login, you can simply use the authentication uh, REST API as I showed it at the beginning. Um, thank you, Shai. Uh, thank you so much for helping us with this webinar. Um, we are uh, out of time, and we basically covered all the material that we wanted to include in I think no question remained unanswered. So uh, thank you, everybody, for coming. I hope you find this webinar uh, useful. Uh, please feel free to contact us uh, for any additional questions. Uh, you will get a uh, follow-up email, as I already mentioned, with all the resources, including the slides, uh, the recording, uh, and, of course, all the links where you can find information and how to contact us for any further help. Uh, thank you again, and see you in our next webinars. Bye-bye.